Y'all remember that sentient trash heap from the old Fraggle Rock show? Howdy, y'all! I'm Rissy, and I review things. Today, I'm reviewing six months worth of product empties. All the stuff that I've been consistently using over the last six, uh, slightly more than six months, actually. So you're gonna get the details on products that I use every day. There's a whole lot to feast on in this particular platter. We're gonna start with skincare for the body, then skincare for the face, makeup, and hair care. Kicking off with skincare for the body, I've got my favorite body wash, the Live Clean Mango and Aloe Butter Sensitive sensitive foaming body wash. This stuff is so great. It's like 10 Canadian dollars. It has no fragrance. It's full of very gentle surfactants and moisturizing ingredients, but it's a powerful enough cleanser that it tames my armpit funk. It's the perfect combination of powerful and gentle. Considering that it is winter in northern Alberta right now, I need all the gentle cleansing that I can get. I've used up three of these things. It also lasts a while. Would I repurchase? Absolutely. I don't see my love for this going away anytime soon soon. Next up, Dove Dry Spray. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my all-time favorite antiperspirant slash deodorant, I use specifically the 48-hour protection in sheer cool. This stuff is great because it doesn't transfer onto my clothing. It keeps me very dry. My sweat is acrid and horrible. I'm not one of those people who can sweat and just use a deodorant. Like, no. If I perspire at all, it will begin to stink and stain every item of my clothing. I need something really, really strong, but also something that's not gonna irritate my underarms because they get really sensitive. This stuff is basically perfect. If you are sensitive to aluminum deodorants, I've actually read a lot of reviews from people who found that this is the only aluminum-based antiperspirant that they can tolerate. Give it a try. It's long lasting. It's inexpensive. It dries down incredibly quickly and it won't stain your clothes. Next, Aveeno Skin Relief Shower and Bath Oil. So I have enough of these to play a bowling game with. <laughs> I go through this stuff like crazy. This is absolutely incredible for using in the shower to keep your skin nice and moisturized. I have a two layering moisturizer strategy for dealing with just how cold and dry it is, but I'll admit I also exacerbate some of the damage to my skin because I can't stop taking hot showers, like really hot showers. I want to lobster style boil myself. Quite frankly, as somebody who struggles with depression, hot showers are not really a luxury for me. I might not be able to get out of bed, but I can bribe myself to do it with the thought of a really nice hot shower. It just makes you feel like you can actually do things and be functional. But hot showers can be damaging to your skin. What's a girl to do? Well, bombard yourself with moisturizers. This is unfragranced and it's one of those shower oils that you just like rub all over yourself and then rinse it off and it leaves this wonderful layer of moisture behind. It has a very faint oatmeal scent, which I actually quite like. And in general, this is just a really good, really cheap product. I wouldn't be going through nearly as many of them if it was more expensive. But really, really great for sensitive skin and for ensuring that that moisture from the shower really gets locked in. Already repurchased? My precious babies, I love you! Ah! For the second step in my body moisturization regimen, I've tried two products. So this one was a favorite from last year, the Oriage Chemos Anti-Itch Soothing Oil Balm. This stuff is powerful, but very disgusting. It is an oily, very, very heavy moisturizer that just banishes dry, scaly, ashy skin. But it doesn't smell the greatest, and it's so oily. It will leave an oily residue on your skin that you may need to rub in a second or even a third time. This is some pretty heavy artillery here. A lot of people might not like the texture. So I decided to give something else a try, and that is the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Balm AP+, Plus, the Anti-Itch Lipid Replenishing Soothing Balm. You know, this is not bad. I mean, you don't get as much. So this is a full half a liter of disgusting oil balm. This is only 400 milliliters. This is pretty nice, though. I would say the texture is less heavy than the Uriage, and it's pretty moisturizing. I I would recommend this to anybody that's not living in Canada as a really good body moisturizer that just helps lock in moisture and soothe your skin smooth over any patches of roughness. It's pretty damn good. It's just not enough for me based on the climate where I live. The product out of these two that I repurchased is this one. However, I strongly recommend this for anybody who does not have severe skin dryness exacerbated by constant hot showering. I will say where this one really shines is helping skin heal. It's 
got Centella Asiatica derivatives in here and ceramides, so it's incredible for restoring and maintaining your barrier. This is just an all-purpose amazing product, but it might just be too much for a lot of people. Repurchased for me, but I would generally recommend this one more to most people. Either way, you're not gonna lose out. Next up, the Oxy Deep Pore Oil Absorbing Formula Medicated Acne Pads. These are salicylic acid pads, so they have 2% salicylic acid, and they've got alcohol and fragrance, so I don't use them on my face. What I do use them for is under my arms, because again, I am really, really prone to ingrown hairs. It is so annoying, but salicylic acid is one of the best weapons against those little fucks. Every day after I shower, I wipe one of these pads under my arms. I also like to use it under my boobs. Keeps the boob zits away, the area right under your bra where it chafes. Definitely repurchase. will continue to do so. I would love to find something like this that doesn't have fragrance and alcohol in it, but since I'm not using it on my face, I don't worry too much. And finally, for skincare for the body, the Aveeno, I have a lot of Aveeno products in here, I guess. Aveeno Skin Relief Shaving Gel. Oh man, this stuff is great. First of all, I only have one thing of it here. It lasts forever. It is just a basic shaving gel, but it doesn't have any fragrance and it's incredibly soothing. It promises that it'll reduce razor bumps and ingrown hairs, and it actually does. It does the thing. I was using just like Barbasol, no, no, grocery store generic Barbasol for shaving my underarms and legs, and I'm really prone to ingrown hairs. I spotted this in the store and switched to it, and I am never going back. I cannot believe that this provides such a nice lather. It's incredibly moisturizing, and it really does cut down on irritation on my underarms and legs. It leaves the skin very smooth, and moisturized, and it's that oat in there, that colloidal oatmeal that cuts down on the irritation, inflammation, and the ingrown hairs, which are such a freaking pain in my ass! Well, not, not literally in my ass. Freaking pain in the armpit. There we go. <laughs> totally recommend this. Absolutely repurchase this. It's cheap and it lasts forever. Moving onward to skincare for the face, let's start with a product that I reviewed last time that had been discontinued. This is the last extant bottle of the number seven Radiant Results Revitalizing Toning Water that still exists in the wild. <sighs> I used this as a cleansing toner because it's very inexpensive and you get 200 milliliters of the stuff. What I do is uh, take a reusable cotton round after I'm done cleansing my face at night or as my morning cleanse and I just saturate the pad with this stuff, wipe down my face, everything feels nice and clean and refreshed. I didn't rely on it for serious skincare benefits even though it has red ginseng and vitamin C in it, but I was just mostly interested in a really gentle product with some humectants in it so that I could wipe down my skin and leave a light layer of moisture behind to prep my skin for more skincare products. Of course it was discontinued and replaced with a shitty version that has both drying alcohol and fragrance, which this had none of that. So fuck you, number seven. What did I replace it with? Great question. This is the Claire's Daily Skin Hydrating Water. Man, do I love this stuff. So first of all, it comes in these giant 500 milliliter bottles. It has an amazing ingredients list. It's got green tea, some humectants. It's got all sorts of good stuff in here. I use it the exact same way. Obviously it lasts lasts longer. It also costs more, of course. The packaging also is just so classy. I love seeing this sitting on my skincare shelf. It does the exact same job, only better, I think. While I'm sad that a product I like was discontinued, the one I've found to replace it works a lot better, and I love it so much. Repurchased? Absolutely I did. I'm working on another one now. Next up, the Aveine Eau Thermal Spring Water. If you've seen previous empties videos of mine, you know that I do a very wet skincare routine. Water on your skin helps other skincare products absorb. Also, if you're using a lot of humectant moisturizers, humectants are things like glycerin, hyaluronic acid, beta-glucan, that kind of thing. Their whole point is to trap and hold water in your skin. I found that it's great to give them something to hold on to. I use a very powerful humectant toner, and in between each layer of toner and then each layer of skincare, I missed, 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 Miss, 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 missed. It really helps lump up my skin and help that hyaluronic acid take moisture from here and not from here, because that's one of the problems of living in a cold, dry climate, is that if you apply a lot of hyaluronic acid and there's not enough water in the air for it to grab onto, it'll start leaching it from the deeper layers of your skin, which is not great. This stuff is essential. It lasts a pretty good long while, like at least a whole month. I find it to not only not be irritating to my skin, it has no fragrance, obviously, it's just thermal water. It's got some nice minerals in there that there is some scientific evidence for. They're helping soothe irritation on the skin, repurchase to the tune of, I think I have six of these, one for each month. <laughs> 
Pfft. I love this so much. Absolutely repurchased. The Kazarex Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. Literally was it says on the bottle. It's 96% snail mucus. I love coating myself in delicious, wonderful slime. If you don't have any irritated skin or acne, you might not see much of an effect. But for those of you who do, if you've got hyperpigmentation, if you've got any kind of condition that causes your skin to be irritated or sensitive, especially acne, this can be a miracle worker. It just heals my skin so well. And since I'm oftentimes testing new products, sometimes it irritates my skin. This is amazing for dialing down inflammation, helping my skin to heal. This is an absolutely essential part of my skincare routine. I wish to never be without this stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Repurchase 100%. A brief warning, if you are allergic to either shellfish or skin mites, you may have a bad reaction to this. Something to think about if you're considering adding a snail product to your routine. Next up, the iUnique Beta Glucan Power Moisture Serum. I love this stuff. It has become essential. It's very sticky, thick, and viscous, and just provides so much moisturization and healing. If your skin has been damaged by the cold and dry air, it just sweeps across and really dials down that itching and inflammation and helps my skin heal afterwards. Definitely repurchased, still using. Next, facial oils. I don't use oil blends at the moment. I just use oils that are like 100% the thing. And I mix them with the snail mucus and the beta glucan. And God, it just makes this amazing cocktail of soothing, calming, healing, moisturizing. It does so much for my skin. This is Tamanu oil, the 11 milliliter size from Tusawong. Really cheap. And since it's 100% oil with no preservatives, 11 milliliters is actually the perfect size. This will last you a couple of months. I've only used up three during this empties period. I just put four drops into my snail mucus and it's just so rich. This is a very rich emollient oil. It doesn't break me out though. It smells faintly like waffles. I like the way this smells. It's spicy and cool. Totally recommend this. Absolutely have repurchased. And then the Ordinary's 100% rosehip seed oil. Rosehip seed oil is wonderful because it's a light oil. It has a lot of great, like not just emollient benefits, but it can be helpful in healing acne scars. The Ordinary's version is super inexpensive and really easy to get your hands on. I love this stuff so much. Also repurchased, probably will be doing so forever. Also from The Ordinary, the EUK 134.1%. This is one of the only antioxidants that I actually trust to work. The problem with antioxidants in skincare is that they use up their antioxidant power really quickly and then they are oxidized. That process of oxidization can actually turn those antioxidants into things that are harmful to your skin. They don't last very long. As soon as they're exposed to oxygen, that starts the process and bam, ruined. This is a vastly superior antioxidant. It is an artificial form of superoxide dismutase, which you may have heard if you're really into flashy new skincare ingredients. And that is well known as one of the most potent antioxidants out there, and it's self-renewing. The Ordinary's sister brand, Nyon, makes a mist that has that chemical in it, but it's a lot more expensive. I like this version because it works just as well, and it's a lot less expensive. I use this in the step right before I do my snail mucus beta glucan and oil cocktail. I put this on. They actually, on the directions, they apply it after water-based serums, but before heavier oils and creams, which is perfect. I do think it helps with any kind of redness on my skin and just spilling its function as an antioxidant. This is not something you just start and expect to see immediate results with. As an antioxidant, one of the things it should do is help mitigate the effects of sun damage so it can help with healing hyperpigmentation. Same for other types of skin damage that are caused by reactive oxygen species, our gross horrible friend. For more on reactive oxygen species, go see my first video in my series on sunscreen. Most antioxidants are kind of crap at doing what people think that they're going to do. This this and fullerenes are the only antioxidants I would ever actually recommend to somebody, and that's because they are just insanely powerful. So yeah, repurchased and going to keep repurchasing. Speaking of heavier creams, this is a miniature version of the CeraVe moisturizing cream, which I am not using right now. I'm actually testing ceramide creams right now. God only knows when I'll be finished and can do the big review, but I was waiting for a shipment to come in with a Korean product, and it was taking a long time, so the nightmare of shipping right around Christmas. Christmas, and I was like, mm, I'm sure that I can just use some basic moisturizer. I think it was the Cetaphil moisturizer that I had a mini of floating around, and I'm sure that will be fine to protect me from the cold. No, utter fucking failure. After one and a half days using the Cetaphil, I was like, my skin is so fucking dry. I cannot stand the feel of it. It feels like my face is cracking apart. I had to run out and get a mini version of this. This stuff is absolutely amazing for dry winter skin. For dry skin any time of the year, it's not greasy. It actually has kind of a satin matte finish. It's incredibly nourishing and moisturizing 
moisturizing and really good at help trapping that moisture in your skin and restoring your skin barrier with those wonderful ceramides. Do I recommend this? Absolutely I do. Thank you for saving me, Seraphine. <laughs> Hopefully we never have to do that again. <laughs> This is the Vaseline Intensives Care Problem Skin Therapy. This is a very light occlusive moisturizer. An occlusive is anything like petroleum jelly or mineral oil, things that prevent water from evaporating off of your skin. And in the winter time, that shit is essential, or at least it is for me. This is very cheap. It's like five Canadian dollars. It's got some pretty good ingredients that are also very basic. It's just lotion that's petroleum jelly based. My favorite thing to do with this is to use it as a light occlusive as the second to last step in my skincare Routine. After I've done all of my watery steps, toner, oils, creams, all that sort of stuff, I put this on before my sunscreen and it just locks moisture in. The use of this consistently has enabled me to be able to walk down the street and take a minus 20 degree blast of wind to the face and be like, nah, it's no thing. It's fine. Tried going a week without this and that was a huge mistake. So gonna keep rebuying that. For the lips, my beloved Uphue Matacasticide Lip Sleeping Mask. I don't ever want to be without this. What if CeraVe Healing Ointment had some Tella Asiatica derivatives in it to help speed the healing of damaged dry lips only had a nicer texture too. This stuff is absolutely the best lip sleeping mask lip treatment that I have tried. If you want more information on that go check out my big review of 38 different lip masks but yeah there's nothing that beats this stuff. It's incredible. It's also why it's sold out everywhere right now. I have another one on the way that I had to get off of eBay because all my usual websites that I buy from are completely sold out so I guess that shows just how great this stuff is, especially in winter. Repurchased most longingly. And speaking of petroleum jelly based occlusives, I have here Vaseline Original Healing Jelly. What I like to do with this is mix it half and half with a sleeping pack. And if you don't know what a sleeping pack is, they're like Korean and Japanese products that are designed to be not just a thick cream, but a mask with serious skincare benefits that you apply as the last step in your routine at night. Some of them already have petroleum jelly in there, just really lock in that moisture overnight. For the ones that don't, I like to mix them half and half with this stuff and it works really Really, really well again especially in the cold dead bowels of a Canadian winter. Repurchased. Time for some sheet masks. This is the Innisfree My Real Squeeze Mask in Coconut. I think I've got four of these. This is a very very nice not so much hydrating mask but nourishing to the skin. I use this when the winter has just been kicking my ass and I want to feel serious moisture getting into every layer of my skin. This stuff is wonderful for that. These are pretty inexpensive. They have fragrance in them but it's very light. It's almost impossible to detect. Just a really good mask for the winter time. Also along the same lines the Papa Recipe Bombay Honey Mask. This is just the original Bombay Honey. I don't like any of the other versions of this mask nearly as much as I like the original and this is a really rich honey mask that just plumps, soothes, hydrates the skin. I've even had this diminish zits on my skin so it's just a great all-purpose mask. It gives this beautiful glow from the honey and the propolis that are in here. It's fragrance and it's a bit of a guilty pleasure because the fragrance is apple pie. It smells so, so good. And I've never found it to be irritating to my skin, even though my skin goes back and forth on whether my skin will tolerate fragrance or not. But this stuff, absolutely incredible, especially in the winter. Get that glow, yo. Finally, for skincare, supplements. I believe in transparency. I hate it when YouTubers would talk about, I use all these expensive Sunday Riley products and that's why my skin is so clear. And then it turns out that they did six months of Accutane. Like, fuck you. You liars. In the interest of transparency, I want to talk about any supplements and medication that I take to improve my skin. First of all is hormonal birth control. I take one of the hormonal birth control pills that has estrogen and progesterone in it. It has 24 pills rather than just 21. It's made my period go away. This has been great in fighting against acne. It's a generic form of low estrogen. I am not a medical doctor, so if you are interested in hormonal birth control, especially for treating skin issues, absolutely talk to a doctor first. But I love it and and we'll continue to repurchase. Next, Saw Palmetto. What Saw Palmetto does is it is an anti-androgen and specifically it affects DHT, dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone is awful if you are a woman. I am endeavoring to yeet all of it out of my body if possible. It causes your skin to produce more sebum so it makes you oilier. Obviously that contributes directly to acne. The release of DHT in your body is essential for certain aspects of puberty and it's also why puberty makes you break out. It also causes 
causes the hair on top of your head to fall out and hair everywhere else to start growing at a rapidly accelerated pace. <laughs> DHT is a fucking monster and it just ruins all sorts of things. If you're male, it will ruin your prostate if you have too much of it in your system and obviously it causes pattern baldness. You've heard of medications like spironolactone that affect levels of DHT and saw palmetto is just a gentler version of that. Really like this brand. This is the Sundown Saw Palmetto 450 milligrams. This I have found to be extremely efficacious. It keeps the hair on top of my head. I'm absolutely shedding fewer hairs since I started using this. It also helps keep the hair here down. It helps keep acne down and just in general works to counteract the nasty effects of any DHT that I might have. However, not all supplements are created equal. How do I know this is so effective? Well, because Amazon was briefly out of this. So I had to substitute with this fucking garbage. This is the Nature's Bounty Saw Palmetto, also 450 milligrams. God, this stuff sucks so hard. It does nothing. As soon as I started taking this, about a week into it, hey, I'm getting a lot more zits, huh? Shedding more hairs. Oh gosh. The hairs on my upper lip seem completely out of control. What the fuck is going on? It is just totally this garbage. There's a huge problem in the supplement industry, a lack of testing and lack of just making sure that, that the actual supplement is in the capsules. I would say this is an example of one of those where there's probably nothing to it. Sundown? Yes. Nature's Bounty? Boo! Yeah. Next up, makeup. Let's start off with a product that I knew had been discontinued at the end of my last empties video. This is the Avain High Protection Complexion Correcting Shield, a mineral sunscreen with a really nice tint and a lot of skincare ingredients. It's got all of the ceramides. It's got a ton of iron oxides. That's why I was so interested in it because iron oxides are one of the only things that can prevent hyperpigmentation caused by high energy visible light. This seemed like the answer to my prayers, which is why it was probably discontinued. But life goes on and I replaced it with this, the NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil. Now, this is not a sunscreen. This is just a BB cream, a very, very light coverage one at that. However, what I love about the NYX Bear With Me line is that they actually have some shit that looks good on olive skin tones. And that's what this one, I think this is the shade, Vanilla Nude. If you have light olive skin, this is great. It actually just blends right in with my olive undertones. I use this on basically any day. I'm not doing like a full face of makeup. I'm still gonna put on a BB cream, something with iron oxides in it. I really liked this. It has no fragrance, which is kind of amazing. It has some really good skincare ingredients. I'm not gonna repurchase it, even though I really liked it, and that's just because I want to try some other BB creams. I have the new one from Perito on the way, so we'll see how that does, but I probably would come back to this at some point. I really, really liked it. Next up, we have the remains of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finishing Powder in the shade Light. I had already hit pan on it, and then it broke. <laughs> this was pretty nice. I only use powders on my face to set at my under eye area and to go on before I use eyeshadow primer, I will powder my eyes because my lids just get so friggin' oily, even though the rest of my skin is incredibly dry. Thanks, God. This was really nice for under the eyes. It's a very fine milled powder. It looks wonderful. I couldn't really use it on the rest of my face though because powders tend to look like shit on me. I have since replaced it. I just wanted to try other powders and I'm using the Pat McGrath Blurring Under Eye Powder and I actually like that one a little better. Would not be repurchasing this. The packaging is lovely, but also not the most robust. Goodbye. Uh, you won't really be missed, but it was nice while it lasted. And finally, for makeup, we have the last wee nubbins of my favorite eyeliner. This is the Sephora Contour Eyeliner. This is a gel cream formula, and that's why I love it. This is in Sangria, which is a really dark burgundy purple. I love shades like this because it's less harsh than a black eyeliner and really makes my brown eyes pop. So if you have brown or green eyes, actually, this could work really, really well for you. But I really love it for it, not just the wide range of just very vivid vivid colors is just how creamy it is. It does not tug at my skin, which I cannot stand. I will not use an eyeliner if I get any tugging. This just spreads right across wonderfully, provides wonderful pigmentation. It's not waterproof, or at least not nearly as waterproof as they claim that it is, so keep that in mind, but it's also really inexpensive. I've used up two of these. I'm using up another one right now. I will continue to use them up. Please, 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 Sephora, I beg of you, don't discontinue this color. It is my favorite. Finally, hair care. I have the Revlon Professional Equave Instant Detangling Conditioner. My hair is very thin and fine and delicate, and it's a huge struggle to keep it moisturized without weighing it down horribly, because there's all these defrizzing products out there that sound incredible, but I put them in and it's just like, grease. 
but this is a leave-in conditioner that I've actually found it detangles my hair so well that I just use it in the shower. It's a spray on. I do my shampoo, rinse it out, and then just spritz a goodly amount of this on, let it set for a minute, comb my hair through, and then I don't rinse it out. I have such a problem with my hair getting tangled again because it's so fine, and this really does the job to take out the tangles. It also moisturizes, but it does not weigh my hair down. A complete and total miracle. This is the 200 milliliter version, which I bought after going through a full half a liter of it, and I was like, you know, this giant thing is pretty unwieldy for the shower. But after using this and going through it much more quickly, I was like, you know, I'll take unwieldy. So I actually did repurchase it, but in the 500 milliliter size. I absolutely love this. If your hair is like mine, give this a try. It comes from Spain and it works incredibly well. My all-time favorite shampoo, the Aveeno Apple Cider Vinegar Blend Clarify and Shine Shampoo. I use a lot of dry shampoo because I don't want to wash my hair every day because it dries out so easily. I have the driest ends and the greasiest roots, so it's necessary to just blast a bunch of gunk off of my roots when I do wash my hair, and this stuff is incredible for that. It also smells like apple pie, and it's so clarifying. It makes my hair shiny and just strips away everything gross, which is also important for ensuring that your hair doesn't fall out. If you plug up that follicle, you can cause it to die. This isn't stripping, but you can overdo it with this. If you let it sit on your scalp for too long, the vinegar in there can be a little bit irritating. Kind of have to find that balance, but I find the results are totally worth it. I have like five of the things. Obviously, I like it, and I absolutely did repurchase it. I don't recommend the conditioner. I didn't find it to be particularly detangling or particularly moisturizing. So the shampoo, yes. The conditioner, no. Next up is dry shampoo. My favorite brand for the last several years has been Batiste. I had an unfortunate encounter with the beautiful brunette. I wasn't able to actually use very much of this because it kind of exploded everywhere and you can see that the pigment that they have in there just got on everything that I owned and I found that the sprayer doesn't actually work anymore. So gross. Although that's largely a one-off. Obviously I didn't actually finish that. But then I discovered this, which is just the regular dry shampoo without any pigment in it. And this is in the scent wildflower, or if you like in French, fleur sauvage. Generally, all the different scents, they don't really make much difference to me. There are some that I find gross, but none that I found really good until this. Oh god, I don't like heavy florals, and this is a floral, but not gross like they usually are. The first time I was wearing it, I kept like sniffing like, who's wearing that perfume? Where's that smell coming from? And it was actually me. <laughs> and of course, they discontinued it. It was that that made me decide, all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and start testing other dry shampoos, because having had this one smell so good, I was just not in the mood to use another Batiste when it would only remind me of what I had lost. <sighs> And then finally, I'm so glad I ran out of this product just so I could friggin talk about it in a video. This is the Lador Keratin Power Glue. It's a leave-in conditioner styling aid and it is utterly unique. So first of all, this has snail mucus in it. Yes, I found a hair care product with snail mucus. <laughs> I can't get over just how incredible this is for my hair. So again, I have problems with styling products weighing my hair down really easily, but this does not. What I do is any day I'm going to blow dry my hair, I put the quarter size, brush it through my wet hair, and then blow dry. It adds volume and strength to my hair. It adds a little bit of shine and it's a really great heat protector, but it doesn't weigh my hair down at all. This is nothing short of miraculous. I love it so much. I have another one on the way right now from Yes Style. And in the meantime, I'm using up my travel sized versions that I got because I love it so much. I will not be parted from it even on vacation. This is not very expensive depending on where you get it from, it is easily the equal of any Western hairstyling product that I've tried. I don't know how well it works on thick hair, but for my fine, delicate hair, it is absolutely wonderful. It has this lovely, very light fragrance. It's not annoying. It's not gross. I find a lot of hair care products to just be really over fragranced and I don't like it. But this one, A plus all the way. And that's it for my empties. <laughs> oh my god damn, that was a lot of stuff, but that's what happens when you don't do an empties video for, you know, more than six months. I hope you found this educational and entertaining, and if it inspired you to purchase any of these products, or if you've tried them themselves, let me know how you feel about them in the comments. Until next time, bye y'all! Sentient trash heap from the old Fraggle Rock show. Ah!